The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? One, two, three, four. It's the start of something beautiful. A small acquaintance has blossomed. It's ripened into a precious friendship. It feels like life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. My life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. This is true. Oh, it's better, it's better with two. My life. Oh, it's better with you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my brother. My brother, mean advice show for the modern era. I can't even get through it. I'm so excited. I'm just so happy. I'm Justin McElroy. Uh, what up, Trav Nation? I'm your middle agist brother, uh, Travis McElroy. Woof woof, big dog. Woof woof. Wonka, Wonka, Wonka. Wonka, 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 Are you ready to talk about Wonka? Deal with it. I can't be. Last night. Are you ready to talk about Wonka? It's all I've wanted. I feel like I've been playing with a hand tied behind my back. They made a new very cold Ghostbusters. And we haven't even been able to talk about that. We don't even have time to unpack. Do we don't understand? have time to unpack cold Ghostbusters today. We can't we do have Ghostbusters st- chillers. We can't no. do it. We got too much Wonka in the tank. We what? need to expunge it oh, quickly. Okay. Hey, I see just... if you're listening. If you don't release Ecto Colder, I'm going to be so fucking pissed off. Oh, my off. God. That's Set. so great. Travis, Travis that's no actually Ghostbusters. so great. Yeah, but we can't no, talk listen. about that now because we're about to learn how Willie... Became Wonka. If you don't have the context here, our heroic negotiators for the SAG after strike finally pummeled Hollywood into submission with their iron will. Fran and Drescher t- came out a Fran Drescher single handedly invoked the nanny state and, and on all of America. And now we can act again. We can perform. I'm hey guys, I'm gonna be back in front of a camera. I mean, oh. just the idea. <laughs> Just the idea of it, treading the boards under those key lights, the best boys. I'm going to be in front of a camera again. Yeah. Mama, I'm coming home. (laughs) Hollywood, here he come. Are they bringing you in for reshoots on Wonka? Uh, Don't even fucking joke about that, Travis. So uh, we didn't, I didn't even watch. I'm Augustus's sexy brother, (laughs) Daryl. Daryl Gloop. Gloop. (laughs) My name is Daryl Gloop. I love to eat too. But I have huge muscles. Yeah. Cool. I only we, eat protein powder. Raw protein powder. I didn't even allow myself to watch Wonka T2. Wonka trailer 2 is what yes. we call the second Wonka trailer. In What's the, the Wonka point? What would, the, what would you do yeah, with the, the thoughts that you have about the trailer? Right, exactly. You would just get blue I, gumballs. Right. Gross. I was already all full up. I was all full up of Wonka all the way. And now... Now we can. Now I watched. Uh, this is fresh off Wonka T two. Watched uh, just moments ago, and boy howdy, my sides have split wide open. All my guts spilled out on the floor, and I died. And I, was reborn in Timothy Chalamet's arms. I don't know if you guys felt this way, but watching Wonka T two, uh, there is a certain actor what steals the show in this one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and his name Timothy is- Chalamet Ooh. from um, Dune. Another film we can say that Dune. Oh, it feels Dune. so good to just say Dune, Dune again. I think you mean Dune. Dune. The sequel's coming out now. No, nope, I mean Dune. I fell in love with Tim Chalamet in Dune. Well, I didn't mean uh, Timmy Chow. I meant Mr. Uh, Hugh Mungo Grant. Hugh Mungo Grant, Mr. Naughty Hill himself. He's 
He's putting on a master class in <laughs> this one. Shorty, sorry, wait. Did you just short? <laughs> did you just didn't. shorten Notting Hill to Naughty Hill? Yeah, Listen, maybe. didn't mean to, but it's been a long time since I've been able to say the names of movies. I'm a little bit out of practice. God, yeah, listen, as a as a straight white cis man, I'm not used to people telling me I can't do things. Yeah, these past yes. hundred or so days of not being able to talk about TVs and movies. I wish everyone knew how I had suffered. Yeah. Because it yes. has been Personally. absolutely okay. brutal. But we're back. That's the important thing. We could talk about Cold Ghostbusters if you guys want. Because, man, I don't know if you watched it. All the old guys are back, and they're letting you know about it in the trailer. And, gosh, yeah. they are going to be cold. It is yeah. going to be such a Cold Ghostbusters Here's movie. what I'm saying. If they're letting me know while the old guys are back, and it's going to be cold... What are they holding back for the movie? I can't wait to see the big surprises. I assume uh, yes. Kate McKinnon's going to show up. Um, uh, ooh, all, I would all, love that. If they would bring them into the verse, that would be yeah. I would be over the fucking moon. Now, I would be delighted if they brought her in, them into the verse. I do love this bold new vision for reboots and refreshes, where it's no longer just what if we brought back the old men from the first one, but what if we also made it super duper cold? Yeah. Or yeah. we could do like a Star Wars, new Star Wars. This is wet Star Wars. Yeah. It's a new thing we're trying out where it's Star Wars, but we've dampened it significantly. I would love more. That. that would be amazing. You used to be able to make movies cold. Yes. Star Wars Hoth, great example. Cool. James Bond frequently skis. Yeah. Love, you used to make cool movies cold. I bet they were Do you remember the one where they were in an ice palace? James Bond in an ice palace with an invisible For car. sure, yeah. Surfing on a ice uh, on The a Golden ice Compass, tsunami. need I say more, that's got polar bears. I just think that you, I think that maybe they were banging their heads against the wall and then somebody, gotta be Aykroyd, raises his hand and he's like, what if this one's cold? What if it's yeah. cold? Fuck. They were all yelling and screaming at each other about the future of Ghostbusters, and Aykroyd went, as he does, like, yeah. as, he, as he does it, he just sat back and went, guys, chill out. And everyone was like, <laughs> everyone's like, fuck. Here's a hat. Okay. He, and they're sitting there, they're fighting. Oh, <laughs> what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Maybe Zool's back. Who knows? And Aykroyd pours himself some of his vodka out of a crystal skull. Into a glass filled with big those big cubes of ice, right? Yeah. And he just starts swirling it. Almost oh, like yeah. He's, like he's ringing a bell, swirling it. And you just hear ting, 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 ting. And slowly that ting, ting, it, it makes its way through the hubbub, the noise, the chaos. Everybody turns and looks, and he's just swirling it. That's it. No words. Yeah. Just the ice. No words. The ice just, that, just the ice in the glass. And then, and then Ernie Hudson gets sad. Because he knows that his idea of having new ghosts where busting them makes you feel bad yeah. is yeah. probably not going to be Plus what the it movie makes is. me feel He's guilt. Like, I love, yeah. Hey, everybody, me, Ernie Hudson here. I love the cold stuff. Uh, <laughs> what about the ghosts where busting them makes you feel bad? Like <laughs> we, ghosts that had like really keep, important unfinished business, which we yeah. totally could have just We're helped circling, them finish. We keep circling. the Maybe some of them can be cold. I love that. Let's yeah. build on that. That's badass if in like six cents. Like Marissa Cooper is talking to Sora from Kingdom Hearts and is just like, hey man, um, thanks for helping me get revenge on my mom. She's a real piece of shit. Can you believe that she poisoned <laughs> <laughs> And then fucking Ernie Hudson's like, Don't worry, I got I I got that was brr. You feel that? It's cold in here. Yeah, it is. You just see Bad uh, news, this one's got kids. Kid goes, kid goes, kid goes. <laughs> you just see you him bust in it. As Swayze's like helping to me more and like sculpt a thing and like uh -huh. oh, we got him. Yeah. Fuck you, Vane. You Yes, what happened to poor little Tim is tragic. But if you've learned the error of your ways, you can make this Christmas a special. Oh fuck! That was Christmas hey guys, Carol. Hey guys, good news. I'm back to start the end times. The fuck you are, Jesus. Get in here. <laughs> 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 hey, Vane. Vinkman. You shouldn't have busted Jesus. <laughs> now Earth is cold because God has turned away from there us. There we go. That's what happens in the movie. Yeah. That's a spoiler. For I know. We'll call my friend Lucifer. He's a popular bar owner and detective. He'll come help us. Yeah, that's right. It's a Lucifer crossover. It kicks ass. If of the two and a half minutes of Wonka T2, yeah. a full minute of it is just Hugh Grant cutting up. Yeah. A full fucking minute of yeah, it. Yeah, man. It's... I've never seen a trailer with a headliner, uh, a headliner before. It. They're like, "All right, 
Hugh, you come on, do do your type five, and then we'll do the rest of the trailer. The rest of the trailer is going to be wild. It's going to have a scene where Keegan Michael Key tries to drown Willy Wonka because he makes chocolate too much. Tries to kill. Hey, if we're going to say it, let's say it like it is. Keegan Michael Key tries to kill Timothy Chalamet <laughs> because of the chocolate that he makes or wants to make or dreams it's of making. Good. That's interesting. I'd like to know about why. Keegan Michael Key is trying to kill Willy Wonka, but oh, oh, Hugh's back. Oh, he's got a good thirty <laughs> second sort of thing about air, air, airline travel, like air, air travel humor. That's that's yeah. good stuff, and man. Tim, and Timmy's five. in there making huh noises, and he can't sleep. Huh? He's uh, the line. Mm, the line. Oompa, what now? This is the best movie ever made. No, 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 no. Can't wait. Now there is a moment only- in the trailer that I need us to discuss the meaning of because he Hugh Grant is saying as an Oompa Loompa that he's actually. Um, he doesn't say I'm an absolute unit, but he says something like <laughs> I'm something of a whopper. <laughs> I'm a whopper. That's it. A whopper. I'm a whopper. I'm a, a whopper. And then he says, "My name is Lofty." To which Timothy Chalamet responds, "Sorry." And I don't know is the sorry your because is that a knock about his name is silly? Because your name is Wonka, right? Wonka, Wonka, Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I miss talking about movies. <laughs> wow, I'm not even sure Wonky's anything, but it really sent me. It made me feel good. Wonky it makes me feel good. good. We're feeling good over here. This is good, Wonky. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> do you guys? Do you guys? Every time you Google Timothy Chalamet, yeah? just usually to see some pictures. Yeah, just to remind okay. myself that he's there. It was there. Do you always type in Timothy and then see the Google autocorrect it to Timothy with two E's and you remember like, <laughs> fuck, that's good. God damn. Yeah. You would think in your head, like, I'm going to Google Timothy Chalamet. Wouldn't it be funny if it was L-E-E with an exclamation point over or a, 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 a little mark over one of the letters. That would be a fun way to spell Timothy. And it is. He gives you exactly what you need every Why do time. you think Timothy, in his wisdom, has decided to follow in the footsteps of Gene Wilder with, judging from the trailer, seems to be, I'm trying to think of how to, a performance that is almost entirely devoid of charm or spark. Now that's interesting. Well, he hasn't learned how to do it yet. Wonka. Be compelling on screen. Yeah, Wonka has to learn. That's what, what if that's what the whole movie was about? We're seeing this stuff about chocolate, but constantly people are like, yeah, this chocolate's delicious. I don't care about you at all, though. But like, you're not your bringing thing? anything. Yeah, I get to this. You wrote your name so big on here, I thought you would be something. Something of a character. Yeah. Now, this guy over here, this Hugh Grant this. guy, Lofty, I'm into him. Can you do more of his thing? Let Lofty cook. Don't show me Wonka. Only Lofty. I think what, I think what, Timothy Wonka's may have barely in it. You probably see all the Wonka stuff in the trailer. Yeah, that's all yeah. it is. Well, I think oh, that's Tim- weird. I saw all of his stuff in the first ten minutes of the movie. Yeah, that's that's it. He's gone. He died. <laughs> he dies yeah. in the first ten minutes. And it's There's about a Wonka Wonka's- becoming Wonka. There's a Wonka spectrum, and Gene's right smack dab in the middle of it. He built this fucking spectrum around himself yeah. and perfected it and mastered it. And so Timothy walked up to the. To the gene, the gene point, the gene, the gene horizon, the gene and pool. the gene pool, and looked at it and was like, "Okay, how can I change? How can I put my mark on this?" And then he looked at the footsteps <laughs> leading away from the spectrum, <laughs> where Jonathan, where Jonathan, where Jonathan Deep took the f- banner and just took off running, and everyone was like, wait, wait, "Johnny, Johnny, 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 hold, hold on, on. Johnny, 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 it's gonna snap." We want to Johnny, gonna hold gonna on, Johnny, 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 Johnny. We need to tell you how to do the movie. Johnny, Johnny, please, Johnny, we need to tell you how to do the movie. <laughs> He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Too late. I'm doing Michael Jackson. Goodbye. He's Bye. Doing- I'm doing. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Have you seen um, Gene's <laughs> version? You have. You haven't. Okay. I don't You're watch just going- Okay. <laughs> I don't care for them. So what? I think that maybe Timothy saw that and took a few steps back away from the Gene pool. Away. I feel from- like Timothy. Timothy saw Toucan Sam dressed up as Wonka on the themed box of Fruit Loops. It was like there it is. Yeah. That's it. That's, that's the, my that's, thing. That's the I brought in something I of a model. vision board. Uh, Timothy, that's just a box of Fruit Loops. Yeah. I found the first image and kept it. That I didn't I'm have not, to go any further. I won't accept this. I think he's going to crush it. I think this movie's going to be a fucking delight. I think that, um, you know, the Paddington gang have done it have done it again. And I think it's going to be a delight that a lot of adults that you wouldn't expect come out of the woodwork to say, like, I'm full-blown. I'm a full-blown Wonka head. Yeah, I I'm me. a Wonka I'm, Wonk. I'm, a, I'm, f- I'm traveling the country following Wonka now. Oh, J- J- Justin's pulling something up here. Oh, I mean, yeah. Can I say... 
Now, Justin, is it possible yeah. that this um, Fruit Loops this Wonka... This is, I'll just show my brothers, by the way, Wonka Fruit Loops, and they've got Toucan Sam, and, you know, every time somebody draws Toucan Sam, you gotta make a choice about the hands. Sometimes he's got fingers, sometimes he's got feathers. You always yeah. gotta make a choice. And then they've put him in a photorealistic Timothy Chalamet Wonka costume on yeah. shelves at Target now. Why is the 12.3 ounce so large? It's no, really big. Know. Um, it also says in a bright, bold banner, your milk turns berry licious. What was it doing before when I put fruit loops in it? <laughs> berry trocious. How would you describe the it flavor? It was berry trocious before. We had to tweak it. We had to tweak it just a little bit. Um, I want to talk about the moment in the trailer where somebody made the decision, one word at a time, to write out, learn how Willie becomes... Wonka and Willie is on screen there by itself, and I just really have to think about if you were if somebody walked up to Willie Wonka and just said, "Hey, Willie," it would take me out of the. It might actually take me. William, out of the what's up, Bill? Bill? Bill Wonka, look at this kid. Oh, Bill Wonka over here making some candy. Good for you, Bill. I'm um, looking now at the list of movies I just to want to make sure. There's a new book club. We, uh, Little Mermaid, oh, Spider Ver. Okay, we're good on that. Anything else that we need to touch on that we like missed? Barbie and Oppenheimer. I mean, is there anything there? There's nothing we can add there. Nothing we Haunted can add Mansion? there. Nothing we can add there. Nothing to add there. No, they did a new Expendables. Okay, I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. They did make a, I did watch the Saw, the new Saw where uh, Saw becomes a hero. And I did want to mention that to All everybody. All right. Case you've been wanting to see, they finally got a vigilante got saw him. movie. Cool. Does he murder extrajudiciously, or still does somebody? That? Tr I swear to God, the plot of the new saw movie is that he has cancer and they try to rip him off. We have been giving him a fake cancer cure, and he's like, "Actually, psych, I'm saw." <laughs> so now yeah. you're all gonna go in this room together. Yeah, and uh, and he kills all yeah. of them. He kills them. Well, spoilers. So I sort mean, of a they, joker, sort of a joker don't hero. Like some of them pass their, some of them, some of them eat their, own, some of them eat I their own teeth sad. with their teeth okay. to find the key that, yeah. Oh my God, guys. I'm, I'm so happy to be able to, to talk about these things again. I'm so happy that we got a good deal for all our hardworking performers. And thanks. I'm going to say specifically thanks to Anthony Rapp. Because I think it's radical that Anthony raps on the negotiating committee. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's, yeah, I wouldn't want to awesome. be across the table. I've I've met him twice. Hugely intimidating. Would not want to be across the table from Anthony and Fran together. No, Are thanks. you kidding me? Franthony, that power couple? Get Franthony. out of here. Uh, okay. I'm also just glad I can finally pitch my Fast and the Furious reboot where they're all sea creatures. It's pretty much shot for shot exactly the same. Except now they're sea creatures. We can even use the dialogue from the original movies. We're just going to yep. animate CGI like... Oh, look at that cool gray white shark. Yeah, that's yes. Vin Diesel. Um, it'll be like realistic version like they did with Lion King, um, mm -hmm. except Fast and the Furious, and they're all sea creatures. So, Have you seen Travis's wet Fast and Furious? Yes, thank it's you It's his new elemental reboot. I would have sworn on a stack of Bibles that that guy was building to a punchline, but I don't think it's there's a real one thing I want to know. It's a, I kind of thought you'd have something. It's just a movie that would do well in this economy. How about a question? Please. Yes. This is still an advice show. Until they shut us down. They can never shut us down. I have a neighbor in my apartment building who plays the piano in the middle of the night well past 2 a.m. The noise is not my problem. The music is actually really good. The problem is that the music they play keeps getting stuck in my head, and I don't know what the songs they're playing are called. I've never spoken to or even seen my downstairs neighbor in the three years I've lived here. I'm not even 100% sure which apartment is theirs. How do I solve these music puzzles? That's from Shazamless in Manhattan. Why, there hasn't been anyone in that apartment for over yeah. 50 years. I love that. That's cool. That's a haunted cool, piano. That would be scary. 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 Yeah, I'm scared over here. I mean, not if it's you, good, right? They, they never talk about that. If you're like, yeah, there's a ghost and uh, he keeps me up all night with his poetry, and it's awesome. It's really good poetry. It man. could be Friedrich Chopin. Yeah, could be. Playing some new jams that you haven't even heard before, music world isn't ready for. If Friedrich is playing that after two in the morning, no thanks. I don't, I yeah. don't, that's not actually 100%. a good time. That's not a good time for loud music for me. 
Hundred percent. Yeah. So I'm glad that you have framed this issue in this way because if I wrote an email to my favorite advice show, that was like some fucking clown and or ghost. Yeah, dear Joe Rogan, well, I need your help. I need your help, Joseph. I never thought it would happen to me. Joseph Gordon Rogan, I need your help. A ghost. I is made playing myself piano. too smart and virile on yeah. Bluetooth, and now yeah, and now I'm I'm up and now too I develop priapism because I'm too biohacked. <laughs> Please help me, Joe. <laughs> Please help me find the gold, Joe. I buried the gold like you told me to, and now I can't find my dang gold, Joe. And my testicles are swelling up, what, from the blue chews? And you never told me the last step, Joe. What's the final Joe, how do I make my scrotum big enough to hold my huge balls from this incredible- <laughs> Joe, I got activated charcoal everywhere, baby. It's terrible over here. How do I kill my um, neighbor and get away with I, it, Joe? Joe, please. I, I was a Joe, rich, uh, <laughs> how do I make the ivermectin once, taste better? <laughs> <laughs> How much Windex uh, is too much? I I uh <laughs> I was originally going to suggest that you should go down and ask the person, like just like a just like, hey, this is going to be weird, but like I love the music you play. Here's the problem, though. I think it is actually fun <laughs> for you to go to somebody and be like, "You've always been on stage. Every moment yeah. that you think that you've been playing for yourself, you're playing for me," and. Every time you play from now on, please know. Although, you know what? I think I would probably want to know if I'm keeping somebody up at two in the morning with my piano music. This probably. is what, but I'm a good person. Yeah. This is what confuses me because if you're playing the piano at two o'clock in the morning in an apartment building, is the assumption not everyone can hear this? I mean, probably, right? Yes. Probably, yes. Like, there's no way you, and, Question asker, let me help you with the you don't know which one's theirs thing. If you're 301 and they're below you, they're 201, right? So you go down there and you knock on their door and you're like, I can't hear your hearing, piano. If you're hearing like 217, your building's got way bigger problems. You yeah. should probably yeah, move. Yeah, sure. It's <laughs> all if you knock, in there. If you knock on their door and they're like, hey, I can hear your piano at two o'clock in the morning. And they're like, you can? That's wild. No, there's a there's a type of piano guy that I feel like anyone who has ever like taken uh like classes or something where there are little piano booths at Huntington High. Whenever I, I took piano so many times because you can't fail it. It's all music. Um, and so I they had these little booths with pianos set up next to each other. I feel like this is a very um common lived experience for anybody who's ever been in a situation like that where you're like i wonder if i can learn vanessa carlton's um a thousand miles and so you just start tinkling like beep boop beep boop beep boop beep boop 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 and then in the booth next to you you hear like fucking like oh let me show you oh i'm sorry were you trying to play vanessa carlton's a thousand mile there's a person who's like you're welcome everybody at two in the morning, like, <laughs> hey, here's one that everyone loves. I know all of our apartments are uh, linked together by one HVAC system through a series of convoluted spy pipes. But but, but this is what I'm saying. If you go down there and say, I love the music, they're most likely, the confidence this person has just from context clues, their response is going to be, yeah, I know you I know. do, bud. Yeah, You man, like it yeah. at 2 a.m.? Yeah, I know bud. you do. Better than sleep, you wouldn't it. you say? Yeah. I'll let me charge you with my music. Yeah. I don't think there's any interaction where this turns out to be, unless it's like a cool little old lady piano teacher can't sleep because of the muse. The muse is muse that a short her. way of saying music? No, the muse. Yeah, bro. Muse. <laughs> I got the muse in me. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's uh. Let's take a break. Let's go to the money zone. I don't care. Got our okay. Wonka tickets. Yeah. Sure. They're expensive. They're so expensive now. Listen, I I have two bags. One I have I have a bag and a shelf. Hey, listen, let me start over. Okay, yeah, no, please. Yeah, you got lost. I got a bag and a shelf. Okay. One is for socks, the other's for socks, but it's seasonal. What? Right? Oh, so after the summer yes. season, the summer socks go in the summer bag, winter socks go on the shelf. You know what all these socks have in common? I'm gonna tell you. They're all bombas, baby. They're all bombas mm. to, to, toe to tip. It's all bombas over here. You know why? Because they're the most comfortable socks I ever worn. And for every pair I buy, 
someone in need is going to get a pair of Bombas. And that makes me feel fantastic. Probably better than it should, considering how little effort I put into it. Here's my new movie uh, pitch. Now that we're allowed to make movies again. Guy comes to yeah, you. Go ahead. He's got a box. He opens the box. There's a red button. And he says, if you push that button, you'll get a pair of socks. But somewhere, someone in the world will also get a pair of socks. That's cool. And then the oh, whole movie, cool. the whole movie is just a guy trying to decide. It's called Phil. If you press the button, Phil a sock. You a goal. If you press the button, you and someone else get socks, and if not, five people get socks. Yeah. Or do you want to double it and give it to the next person? Yes. And that's not the only. And can uh, you lift this big all. heavy barbell? I'll give you twenty <laughs> bucks. <laughs> that's not the only uh, gift you're going to be given with Bombas because they also, you know, the holidays are just around the corner. And uh, they got beautifully designed, ready to go gift boxes with high quality basics. Yeah. And uh, if your giftee doesn't love them, they're covered with a one hundred percent happiness guarantee. I would say if your giftee, if your giftee doesn't love them, you don't need that person in your life. Cut them out. They're poisonous. Yeah. They're honestly poisonous. I would return them before I'd return the socks. Go to bombas.com slash my brother. Use code my brother for twenty percent off your first purchase. That's b o m b a s dot com slash my brother, and use code my brother at checkout. Hey, Griffin and Justin, yeah. you guys ever used a website? Yeah, sometimes. Sure. I'm using one right now. I'm sorry. Let me look at the tabs I have open. I'm using 400 right now. Yeah. These things are websites. everywhere these days. My nephew's yeah. got a website. He uses it to buy and sell Pokemon cards. Loves these things. Apparently, it's the future. Wait, is that my son? So he uses these to buy and sell Pokemon cards. He's made like, he told me $150,000 with this website. I don't think that's wow. true. That would be huge for me. And he's saving it all up. He said to move out when he turns twelve. Um, what? And yeah, that's he's amazing. He's already got his eye on a place. It's cute. He took me over there. Uh, took me on a tour of it. It's pretty nice. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to when he does. Uh, but until then, I'm just checking out his website that he built on Squarespace to buy and sell all of his Pokemon cards. And he said some of the Pokemon cards he stole from his dad's collection. Okay, um, hold on. Is this the six-year-old we're talking about or the two-year-old we're talking about? And so with Squarespace, it's an all-in-one platform where you can, like, sell your dad's stuff or, uh, you know, sell pictures of your dad while he's sleeping uh, to earn money. Uh, so you can stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, sell anything. Your products, anything. content you create. Yeah, your, your dad's shoes. Anything. Even your time. Um, As if I had, sorry, that's, uh, that, what you just said is silly, that I have so many shoes that if a pair were taken from me under any circumstances, I wouldn't notice when I went to put them on to go to school the next day, and they weren't there. He even has the money, he sells basically perverts, spend so much money buying these old shoes, that basically he buys replacement shoes half a size bigger every time. Um, well, and just replaces them, and he's slowly driving his father insane. That's actually good. I'm so glad you've cleared that up for me, because I thought I just had some sort of condition. So you can create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Whoa. Studio app, yeah, that's in there. Uh, they got Fluid Engine, which is the next-generation website design system from Squarespace. Makes it easier to unlock unbreakable creativity. And they've even Woo. got mer member areas that can uh, unlock a new rev a revenue stream for you. So check all that out. Uh, it's totally worth your time. Get one of these websites I've been hearing about. Be like my cool, super young nephew. Go to squarespace.com slash mybrother for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code mybrother to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Square site. Squarespace. So simple, even a two-year-old <laughs> can use it. No, but a 40-year-old can't say it. So excited to make a joke, was he? He couldn't pronounce the name of the place. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to know the sad lore behind Chuck E. Cheese's love of birthday parties? Or, my Saturday mornings are reserved for cartoons? Or, have you wanted to know how beloved virtual pet site Neopets fell into the hands of Scientologists? Or, how a former Mattel employee managed to grow Sega into a video game powerhouse? Join us, hosts Austin and Brenda, and learn all of these things and more at Secret Histories of Nerd Mysteries, now on Maximum Fun. Ah. 
I'm Yucky Jessica. I'm Chuck Crudsworth. And this is Terrible. A podcast where we talk about things we hate that are awful. Today we're discussing Wonderful, a podcast on the Maximum Fun Network. Hosts Rachel and Griffin McElroy, a real-life married couple. Yuck. Discuss a wide range of topics. Music, video games, poetry, snacks. But I hate all that stuff. I know you do, Yucky Jessica. It comes out every Wednesday, the worst day of the week, wherever you download your podcasts. For our next topic, we're talking Fiona, the baby hippo from the Cincinnati Zoo. I hate this little hippo. Okay, here's another question. I work in the gift shop of the National Mustard Museum. Hell yeah. Oh my we sell God. hundreds of different kinds of mustards from around the world multiple times a week. I have to deal with customers coming in and asking if we have any ketchup. As if they're the first person to think of that joke. I personally don't have anything against ketchup, but the mustard has a lot of anti-ketchup propaganda on display. How do I politely respond to these jokers who come in asking for ketchup? I feel like there's two... Different pathways. You that's from wait. That's from mustard madness in Middleton. You could, so you, know. you could have a button that when you they ask, you push it. Klaxon sound. The lights start going off, and maybe some mustard police come yeah. and take that person away. I think there is a far more devastating version of this where you have the button, mm -hmm. but when you press it, it adds one to a big counter Ooh. behind the desk that is not labeled, but like you walk up to the <laughs> counter to buy your mustard, I guess, and it says like 14,916, you don't think anything about it, and you're like, hey, so do you, do you, uh, <laughs> do, uh, uh, do you have any uh, ketchup? <laughs> Click, next number. I've, I, I like I've that. stumbled through that so long that I forgot what the number was that I said, but that 14, would be- 14,917. If, if that happened to me, and I was the one who did that ketchup thing. And then they pressed a button that showed me how unoriginal, what a fucking hack I was. I would not, I would overpay for the mustard by a, by uh, a factor of two. And I would not speak for the rest of the encounter. Especially if they did that, press the button, number ticks up, and then they just look, let it land, and then say, and that's just today. Yeah. Oh. There's, <laughs> there's so many good versions of this. Where you press the button when they make the ketchup joke, and then just on the on the the ticker, it just adds fifty cents. It adds fifty cents to your mustard total. Oh and yeah, says, yeah, and yeah. it says like ketchup, ketchup joke surcharge um, for making me listen to your ketchup joke. What if they were like, "Do you guys sell ketchup?" And you looked around really like furtively, and you're like, "Come with me." And you let him into a back room, and the whole time just seeing locking multiple locks on everything until you bring him to a place, and you like lift up a hidden compartment, and you pull out a tiny bottle, like one of those like tiny glass bottles of ketchup you get like at yeah. uh, room service, and you're like a thousand dollars. It's a thousand dollars. Thousand thousand dollars. Have you, you ever had? You didn't get it for me. Have you ever had mustard ketchup? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever even? Oh, you want to go? Can your to mind the even consider mustard ketchup? You want you want to go into the wing of illegal mustards, <laughs> of illegal and forbidden mustards. Now, sir, we would never. We wouldn't. Come with me. Slip me a twenty. Come, come on, <laughs> come on, quickly, quickly. You didn't Please get it here. Ketchup. You have to eat it all in the room. Don't leave the room with it. You have to eat it all here. <laughs> Please, you're falling behind. You must catch up. Here's a crowbar. Um, Here's a crowbar and a flashlight. <laughs> come with the. Me. Hey guys, I'm trying to hang with you here, but I'm over here on the National Mustard Museum webpage and I'm just having oh, the time of my life. Yep, uh, time to go. <laughs> I'm a National Mustard Museum. It, look, uh, look, you don't have to, look, I'll just share it with you so you can enjoy. This okay, is not about, the biggest uh, building. This is about their, um, their uh, uh, <laughs> educational program, Poop on You. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> you dirty yes. dogs. Oh my awesome. God, yes. Is this the owner of the mu Mustard Museum who appears twice it, on the Trav, page? There's this man, if you haven't seen the page, there is a man who's on e every page of this website seven times, just talk, just appearing about mustard. He seems iconic, but I don't know where, okay, his name is Barry, and he is, I, he's gotta love mustard, I guess. He probably likes mustard. I was. <laughs> I hope he likes mustard, man. He's got a shirt that says, squeeze the day, carpe Dijon on it. That's yes. fucking Barry. Yes. Good, my it's man. very good. A lot of great mustard humor. With more than 6,090 mustards from all 50 states and more than 70 countries. Get out of town. 
I mean, that ain't nothing. It's a lot, Justin. That ain't nothing. It's a lot of mustard. That's a lot of mustard. We gotta get here, guys. Yeah, guys. What? Like, why are we not? Why? Why? We gotta get there. We gotta get to the mustard. We don't museum. do enough cool shit. I think we don't it's the do problem. any fun anymore. We just do shows. Yeah, like, let's go to the mustard museum. Like I used um, to do cool things, and then I got kids, and I don't go to mustard museums anymore. They don't tell What's you this when you're 40, but you come on the, you hit the other side of 40 and you look back at all the mustard museums you could have been going to. Ah, uh, heartbreaking. We had my son's sixth birthday party in a public park. A random old lady, around 75, walked up and made small talk as we set up a table full of snacks for our guest. She was well-dressed, friendly, and seemed to be alone for a walk. An hour later, in the middle of the party, she came back and started to grab handfuls of the food we set up for the guests. Brothers, how do I respond when a kindly elderly stranger just walks up and starts taking food from my kid's birthday party? <laughs> That's from Grab and Go in San Diego. That's cool. Uh, hey, yeah, listen, I don't... I'm going to just say this, my friend, because this is like my gut reaction here. I think you got played mm -hmm. and you're going to have to just take the L. Yeah, you made small talk lady, with her. Yeah, this lady walk up to you and she's like, a stranger's just a friend you haven't met yet. What's up? I'm Gloria. Have hope you have a hell of a good day. Yeah, and then she rolls back up an hour later. It's like it's fucking me, Gloria. You know me, hey, bud. Yeah. Long time no see. Oh shit! Hey, are these pigs in a blanket? <laughs> yeah, man. I I I think she nailed it. Um, she made it work. She did her thing. And listen, unless this is like we're running low on snacks, but even then, she waited an hour. She waited an she hour. She gave your guest plenty of time. There's an alternate reality version of this question, which is I'm at a park and there's people having a party and I really want to eat their pigs in a blanket. Yeah. How can I do it? This is ex this lady has just followed the exact playbook we yes. would have given someone else. Give it an you hour to them. Small talk. Leave. No ulterior motive. Oops, I'm hungry. Oh, my friend Daniel's over there with pigs in a blanket. Right. Here I come. Are those Cool Ranch Doritos? This, wow, what a spread. This Thank reminds you. me, so recently, BB was playing in like first grade soccer, right? And it ended, and they had a pizza party at the park where they normally practice. And the coach had like written something about like, oh, each kid, I noticed this, and you were doing great. And in the middle of this, this, like, I would guess, eight-year-old boy walks up, and just like, while the coach is like reading off the notes he's written, the boy's just like, hey, I'm not a part of this, but is it okay if I get some pizza and a drink? And all the adults, won over by this uh, young gentleman's directness and honesty, were like, yeah, man, go for it. There's plenty. So he grabs the pizza and stands there and proceeds to watch the rest of this presentation. So then, fast forward about 45 minutes. It's time to go. You know, it's, it's getting dark. We turn to leave. I look over. Some of the kids have started like playing around a little bit of soccer. And one of the little girls was like playing goalie. And out of nowhere, ball just flies right into the side of her head, knocks her off her feet. I look over. It's the boy. <laughs> the boy is just so fueled dusted, by pizza. Yeah, dusted a child clean off her feet. And he is standing there with a facial expression beyond his years. The comprehension he has just gotten <laughs> of like, oh, I see. Yeah, you know what? I, I blew it. I'm gonna go, this one's on me. The girl was fine, she was fine. I have been thinking about it for about a month that's since. A, that's a core memory. I don't know what island that builds in that boy's mind to, yeah. turn, to form like a, a very important personality trait of his. As a, he will never ask for food from anyone no. in public ever. Like he'll never do that, he'll never touch a sock, maybe never touch a ball again. Yes, is entirely possible. It's anti sports island because of the murder I almost committed. <laughs> I just like seeing his facial expression rate of like, I should have left after the pizza. I pushed I my luck with I the was pizza. I, got. <laughs> I shot I the cannon indoors. If I, that, that's, see, kids are so different. If I had gotten up the fortitude to say, let me hit that pizza real quick. Yeah. As soon as I had the slice in my hand, it would be full on. Full tilt boogie sprint away from that <laughs> yeah. social situation. <laughs> Never see me again. Yeah. That kid's just gonna ruminate in the perfect crime. <laughs> uh, let's see how. Hey, can I also have your car? How far can I take this? Can I also what are your limits? Can I kill your daughter? Can I make her forget <laughs> math? <laughs> <laughs> I, on paper, like the idea of every every kid's birthday party should should have a, a rando seventy five year old at it. To share, to impart some sort of wisdom or context at the very least. 
but I don't think that that is going to hold the attention of my chill children at all. Like at all, I think it's good and enriching for the most part. But I, unless that unless that seventy five year old has some really like deep thoughts about like the new Pokemon DLC, I don't think that it's going to be a highlight of the party. Well, my, I think Griffin. I don't mean to critique your parenting. Uh, I think you're doing a great job overall. But that sounds like you are maybe falling behind in teaching your children an important lesson, which is every elderly stranger is potentially a time traveler from the future, come back to check on them, right? That could be like, True. that could be their daughter, you know, from like the year 3000 or whatever, not daughter, but great, great granddaughter, come back to be like, I wanna see my great, great grandmother when she was young, right? Like, so it could be anyone, yeah. anyone could be, but also they could be a, a weird sex pervert. So it's one of those two every time, mm. every time. Whenever a random old person uh, compliments me or my children, I give them a second look to be like, is that me? Is that old me? Okay. You know what I mean? You check on, you check, that's something you check on. Well, You're not, concerned about I that. don't go deep on the check, Justin, but I give it a second glance. Is that old me? Yeah. Right? Uh, I want to know. Now, see, more commonly, my bigger fear and m much more frequent is it is an old person. I didn't do a good job paying attention to uh, old people when I was a kid. Yeah, none of us did. I'm realizing this now because these people will roll up on me and they will treat me like we are long lost friends. And I did not clock them. If you have not gotten with me after like, let's call it 35. Yes. I probably didn't clock you. I am sorry. You will have a look where I just want to say like, Church guy, yeah. church guy church, is always the way I you're go. A church to. guy from olden times, so <laughs> like olden times church. Justin, guy? what is you're proposing right? to our question asker is that maybe like Gloria and the six year old son are old friends, and like you don't know who it is, but your son's gonna see Gloria and be like, Gloria, I yeah, think you were one of my, you were one of my NICU nurses. What's up, bud? No, no Justin is more speaking to the more common sort of thing of just like not paying attention to old people when you're oh, not, sure. when you're a young when, when you're, you're a child and they're like they know you right because i was i mean you I, were cool why wouldn't you pay attention yeah. to me as a kid you know right. what i mean a big ball of energy and fun like just like lift everybody's spirits and, like so energizing funny yeah funny doing but like then it's a just child like, don rickles they called doing them. cool they tricks kept, they kept but then you talk to them and they're like still doing the church thing. Oh. It's a little awkward. <laughs> yeah. So they didn't like, grow out of it like you did. It's like you go back to high school and someone's still there. Yeah. It's oh, like gross. okay. Yeah. Little embarrassing. And they're for like you. they're like I laid hands on you Ooh. with the rest of the Bible study class we, to heal yeah. your to heal your your uh your eyesight. We've and been praying for you. We did all the praying for, for you, so you should know me. I so appreciate the prayers for sure. Any good vibes, I'll take them. I don't know you. Yeah. I don't know you. Yes. I want to munch. I want to munch. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast profile and latest greatest brand eating. We have disabled our videos, so I can't show you guys this product right now, but I will send you a picture of it so you can enjoy that for yourself. I will say that this is a product that I have already sampled. Whoa. So I'll be giving you my thoughts because Baskin Robbins is given Thanksgiving sides main dish energy with a new flavor of the month. Okay. This November, the brand is bringing ice cream to the turkey day table, partnering with brand fans Hannah Godwin and Dylan Barber to host the ultimate friends giving. Starting November 1st, Baskin Robbins. Should, wait, hold on. Together. Should I know who those people are? You may by the end of it, but you will not. Starting November 1st, Baskin Robbins is bringing together everything you love about your favorite sides in its new flavor of the month, Turkey Day Fixins. <laughs> huh. <laughs> huh. Perfectly paired with the return of the show-stopping turkey cake. This is presumably... 
your show was about normal food you'd want to eat, and then someone brought out a turkey-shaped ice cream cake, and it did, in fact, stop this the whole show. These limited-time offerings are sure to make you the talk of the table. That I can vouch for. All month long, sink your spoon into side dish bliss with Turkey Day Fixins, a surprising combination of sweet potato and autumn spice ice creams mixed with honey cornbread pieces and swirls of ocean spray cranberry sauce. I mean, yeah, this looks fucking great. (sighs) Yeah. Where did you share this image, Justin? I cannot see Uh, it. Griffin just went went rogue. I went rogue and looked at it. Sorry, Juice, when you were describing all these things, I was like, what could this possibly look like? An orange and white striped sphere with chunks of fixins and beautiful, playful ribbons of cranberry uh, drizzlings all over it. What could that possibly be? It's that. It's exactly that. Wow. And it looks... Really, really fucking good. Does it? Yeah, I mean, the problem is it's so good. Yeah, sorry, thing- guys. Sorry, guys, but smash on this Whoa, one. you're smashing Whoa, it. Gross. On this one, that's going to be gonna have, a smash. Wait, you're going to fuck that ice cream? I'm going to fuck Turkey it up. Fixins. This Okay. Um, whether you want to... This is their... This of, of course, they have to... I like press releases that get defensive. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Now, hold on. Before you say anything, whether you want to save your family from your suspicious casseroles or bring main dish energy to Friendsgiving, that's kind of a play off of big dick energy. And they've put it here in the Baskin Robbins press release about their turkey ice cream. Hey, how big is your ice cream hog? (laughs) <laughs> you want to save your family for your suspicious casseroles or bring main dish energy to Friendsgiving, this scoop will add something interesting mm. and delicious to your traditions. Turkey Day Fixins melds together all your favorite sweet and savory sides. And then it says again, in case <laughs> they, you thought they were joking, sweet potatoes, cornbread, and cranberry sauce. Make what move over, been there, done that desserts, and make way for the new unofficial dessert of Thanksgiving. Okay, so what they're proposing, because this was going to be my next question about deployment of this, right? This would be you finished dinner, and you're like, okay, dessert time, and they're like, amazing. I'm thinking pumpkin pie. I'm thinking some kind of roll. Do you mean the already official dessert of Thanksgiving? And they're like, what did you make? And you're like, ha-ha, I didn't make anything, Debbie. I bought some Basket Robins ice cream. Yes. It's like it's no. Thanksgiving, but it's ice cream. We're going to do Thanksgiving again. It's an ice cream. Ra- okay, here's what we're going to do. This is called Thanksgiving Frozen Empire. Yes. And it's just like the Thanksgiving you know. Yeah. But it's cold. We made it very cold. Oh. I can't believe Griffin didn't laugh at that. It's, I'm sick. Do you know what? Do you know what? I'm, I'm sick I'm, that you didn't laugh at that. I was so fucking excited. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sick exci- that you didn't laugh about that. I'm sick that you all are approaching this. In this, I feel like this segment is going to age so poorly. I feel like this is like it's it's the it's the you know early nineteen hundreds at Bim Bam, and we're like, do you hear about this guy? And he made stinky old bread, and when you eat it, it makes you healthy. Crazy. Uh, it's what, called, guys, check the name. It even sounds like Penis Illin. Isn't that the fucking <laughs> Now, hold funny? on. I would have said that, Griffin, and I would yeah, have stood by it. I know, that's, that's why it. I'm saying these things. I know us so well. But this I would have not, stood by it. I would not have felt is, guilt about it. I gotta tell you, Trav, this is the longest apology I've ever heard for not laughing about Thanksgiving. Yeah, it is weird. Empire. You have characterized this as yucky turkey ice cream. I am I'm character. Not. I am a per- li- Listen, I worked at TCB Wine. It was my first oh, job. he is a professional. I yeah. game- fucking recognize game i was a, i was a flavor smith in that in that uh in, in that grand tradition and i was trying to find it i was trying to find surely if i mix cinnamon swirl with the cheesecake bites and and put it in a little milkshake i was experimenting i was out there on the fucking cutting edge this is what is next this is the next I, step I mean, I, i'm i'm granting you that what i'm talking about is a question of context mm. okay so here, 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 here is the quote. Let me give you the quote. We continue to push the boundaries of flavor innovation at Baskin Robbins. Yes. And wanted to bring a unique scoop to the table that deliciously encapsulates all the sweet and savory flavors from your favorite Thanksgiving sides. So, uh, along with the return of our iconic turkey cake, these offerings are a delicious and innovative take on holiday favorites. What I'm asking is about context. 
I'm asking, do you eat a regular Thanksgiving meal and then they bring out a frozen yes, ice cream? Yes, this is my question as well. All the ice creams of the sides you just ate, or is it, hey, it's November 3rd, but I can't wait for a sneak preview of Thanksgiving food. Can I get that in an ice cream to go? Here's what they should have done. The the headline of this should have been, whether you're a lazy uncle or the lazy friend, worry not, you can just buy it's this not, and, and act like you put some effort into it on Turkey Day. I, it is not about the effort. I cannot believe this episode began with a full-throated, exuberant celebration of Willy Wonka and ends with... V- with just a vehement opposal to his, what would be his vision for Thanksgiving. If you had Thanksgiving with Willy Wonka, he'd be like, what's up, everybody? I got something new for you that's going to really blow your load. And then he would serve up this <laughs> it's fucking gonna blow basket. blow your dick mom. right off. It'll blow your dick r- clean off your body. Oompa what now? That's right. Scorp. And he would throw it down and it would look like this, like a child's dream. And it would taste like Thanksgiving. And we would all be like, wow, I had Thanksgiving in a whole so, new way. They so did thanks- what you're proposing, Griffin, yeah, is that the ice cream turkey cake and the turkey day fixings ice cream replace the meal. I wouldn't. I have to know if that's what you're suggesting, Griffin. I'm saying if you rolled up to Willy Wonka's <laughs> clockwork kitchen uh-huh, and sat down at his table to eat with him and his friends. With Balumbas. There would be no bird served at the table save for the frozen yes. ice cream cake bird. And this incredible sp- o- omni-colored sphere. This fucking Peter Pan hook food. Yeah. This Peter Pan hook food. This is <laughs> this the bangerang dessert. This is the most beautiful scoop of food I've ever seen in my whole life, guys. Now let's meet let's meet the we don't have Wonka on this deal. We got our influencers. Baskin Robbins partnered with reality TV stars and brand fans Hannah Godwin and Dylan Barber to host their first fr- Friendsgiving as newlyweds. Oh, with congratulations. Turkey Day fi- it, with Turkey Day fixins and the turkey cake as the ultimate Friendsgiving staples, this duo will be serving up an unforgettable feast to people who will soon decry them as maniacs. Dylan and I are on the same page when it comes to Thanksgiving food. The sides are the best part. So we've ruined them. <laughs> Turkey Day Fixins has all the flavors we look forward to, smushed all the fuck, <laughs> and then made cold as hell. <laughs> we're, we're excited to host our first friends game. And our last. <laughs> and our last before we're decried as maniacs, my friends. Our new traditions, you know, and enjoy quality time with our friends over some extra special desserts. Nothing gathers people around the table quite like the iconic turkey cake. Mm. And a dessert that will make anyone do a double take. It's a stopping non-traditional tradition. Cool. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Basket Robin's take on a roasted turkey is made to look like it's fresh out of the oven. As it's filled with any... Fu- Imagine that the employee is like in the store. They've shown you like it's an ice cream shape, shaped like an uh, ice cream cake shaped like a turkey. And then they want to describe it. See, no, you don't get it. It's made to look like it's fresh out of the oven but it's filled with any flavor of delicious ice cream you like, decorated with sugar cone legs Good. and covered in caramel praline gray glaze. pre it ahead of time and relax, knowing this Thanksgiving you'll have a turkey day full of yay. And if you don't mind, I want to watch you make it. And let me just throw this out there. Could you get the turkey cake filled with turkey day fixings ice cream? But no, because I want to see That's it. That's good, Trav. No, it's not because I want to see it. I, I want to see it. that. I made it so good, Griffin. We are talking, this turkey cake is clearly pop art. The fucking uh, all-in-one Thanksgiving fixins, turkey day fixins scoop is beautiful, abstract. It's a Jackson Pollock of incredible autumnal flavor. I, I want to see that. I don't want it to, I don't want to hide it inside of, I'm sorry, a pretty garish representation of a dead bird. <laughs> sorry sorry hey y'all thanks so much for listening to our program we hope you've enjoyed yourselves i certainly have fun can i make a pretty big announcement please oh, do yeah, yes Traff, please uh i have been working for the last year to put together uh an event that is going to be happening in may of 2024 it is called adventure quest um you can find all the details at the adventure quest uh, the adventure dot quest um, it's a weekend long 
uh, immersive RPG experience at Ravenwood Castle in Hocking Hills, Ohio. Uh, we're going to have some really fun guests there, uh, including Ify Nawadwe, Christina Ariel, uh, uh, Paul Foxcroft, and Sandeep Parik, and more to come. Um, we're going to be playing games, having fun. Um, it's going to be super fun. I can't stress enough the fun. Go to theadventure.quest for all the details. Uh, tickets are going to be on sale in December. Okay, I'm in. I was trying to get tickets. I they're, they're not up yet. yet. No, they're, they're not on sale till December. Also, Candle Nights. Oh, yeah. We're doing a virtual yeah. Candle Nights event, again, benefiting Harmony House. It's our pre-taped spectacular featuring segments from the family and special guests. It's going to be airing December 16th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Tickets are only $5 with the options to give more. Once again, that goes to Harmony House, so please consider giving more. We've got an event exclusive poster also benefiting Harmony House designed by Zach Sterling. And uh, you can get your tickets now at bit.ly slash candlelights2023. Uh, thank you to Montaigne for the use of our theme song, My Life is Better With You. Uh, I like this song a lot. And when I play it, it it fills me up. It is the only other thing that I that makes me feel joy other than my children and the Wonka trailer. So thank you so much, Montaigne. Uh, that's going to do it for us for this week. And I think we already know what this sound bath is going to be. Come on. My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm a wonk. This has been... <laughs> wonk your dad square on the wonk. Pass. No, thank you. Maximum Fun, a worker-owned network of artist-owned shows, supported directly by you.